Welcome today. Today I'm honored to have April Anderson and Sue Klein. Um, you probably all already recognize her. I've had uh, them both. I've had them on the program a couple of times. Uh, they uh, operate and run uh, Hope Center for Women mm -hmm. in Scottsville, Kentucky. A uh, wonderful ministry there. And, and you pastor, what's the name of your church? Uh, Breath of Life Ministries. Breath of Life Ministries. And uh, y'all just all over the place. And I'm, yeah. see, I'm seeing God open more doors for you guys. Yes. Praise God. That is awesome. Uh, won't you tell a little bit about what, what God has done since you've been last been here, what doors he's begun to open? Okay, well, God has really opened a lot of doors, uh, Deborah. We've, uh, me and April both has been going and ministering at different places. I'm on the leadership team of AWA. Mm -hmm. It's called Apostolic Women Arising. Mm -hmm. And through that, we have women's meetings. And me and April both uh, minister at those meetings. And Gay Rogers kind of heads that up. Mm -hmm. But it's really just for women that is coming up in the ministry. We're seeing so many women that is rising up. Yes. And ministering now where God has opened doors for women mm -hmm. to rise up and minister where mm -hmm. used to it wasn't like that. All right. And uh, But we're really seeing women really just rising up and answering the call of God that's on their life and not just stepping into pastoral positions yes. or anything like that, but just really just mm -hmm. going after God just to Amen. build his kingdom. It might not be, but, you know, heading up a, a, a group women's group mm -hmm. on Monday nights or something, but women is really stepping up. So so we've had that going on, and uh, then God has opened doors for me in April to really we've created our own ministry, and it's called Glory Carrier Ministries. Love the name. Love and the name. Uh, so that, that came out of a vision that she had, and then out of a message later on, probably about a year later that God gave me, she seen a vision of us carrying something down a football field. And, and she was on one side and I was on the other side and we was carrying this like this and we would run, one of us would run till opposition come against us. Mm. And when the opposition come, we would pass it to the one on the opposite mm -hmm. side, of the side of the field. So when she, when she described what that was, that was really the fire and the glory of God that we was carrying. Praise God. And That's then God. later on, God gave me a message called glory carriers that we are actually the carrier of the glory of God, if that spirit lives on the inside of us. So then we just kind of put the two visions together and said, okay, we're going to, we're going to call this ministry glory carrier ministries to where me and her just ministers. We have the hope center for women and, yeah. and we have our church, but it's kind of something that me and April has just doing. So God's opened doors for that, for us to go out and minister other places. He's enlarging your borders. Yes, he is. Praise God. Yes, God. He Isn't is. it exciting? It that is. excites me when the Lord does that. You know, you were talking about the vision you had and everything. It, it reminded me, last night I was having a dream and I, uh, I was going to tell my husband about it and everything because it was just, I, I was sitting there in, a, in a, cha a chair, a rocking chair, and someone brought this baby and put it in my arms. Well, the next thing I know, someone brought another baby and put it in my arms, and, and my arms were getting, I said, I can't hold no more, like, you know, it was kind of comical and everything, but you know, I know there's a reason yes. for that, and so I'm waiting on God to see what he's going to do next, I, I don't want to jump the gun, I think, there's some things I have in my heart, and God sees the things in our heart, he knows our desires, but you know, there are times when we, uh, you know, Sometimes we step ahead of God, yes. and, uh, and I know you guys aren't. You wait till you know without a shadow of doubt it's God telling you to do something. And that's kind of what we're going to be speaking about today, about uh, breaking ground, because until you break the ground, you can't plant something. <laughs> Amen. No. And, and, and sometimes um, uh, we've got the Word of God. Let me read the Scripture right quick. It is found in Jeremiah 4 and 3, and it says... For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground and sow not among the thorns. I'm going to stop, stop with that one because I want to concentrate on that one scripture. I, uh, what came to my spirit when I was studying on this, that um, I see so many uh, people, women especially, that God has placed a gift in into them they haven't um, a clue where to start, where to sow, what to sow, and uh, they haven't learned to break up their fallow ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see that happening. And with you saying that about, you know, God opening so many things and, and showing so many things and stuff, that uh, the first thing that we've got to do is learn to, 
till up that ground. And I looked at the, one of the definitions, it was really awesome uh, for the fallow ground. <coughs> Excuse me. It says the tillable, untilled, tilled, or fallow ground. It is land that could be productive, but for whatever reason has not been broken up, tilled, plowed, or prepared for planting. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, I can tell the enemy doesn't want this to go forth. Excuse me, you want to carry on? Yes, just... I will. <clears throat> uh, there, I really like that. Uh, one, I looked up some definitions myself, <coughs> and one of them said uh, land plowed but not seeded for one or more growing seasons mm -hmm. as to kill weeds and to make the soil richer, mm -hmm. and plowing of land to be left idle in this way. Wow. Wow. I mean, it, it's, it's so... If people would learn to look up all this stuff, I'm one, uh, you know, sometimes people laugh at me because uh, I, I tend to look almost up every single scripture in, in, in the verse sometimes because I want to get the clear understanding if I don't understand it right away. But, uh, the, you know, we don't want it to be unused. Mm -mm. Um, for some reason or another, we haven't, uh, of course, I realize there are seasons that we have to wait upon God. When what God says, go, go. Yes. But, you know, there are times when he, he provides the tool. Um, he gives us the tools and says, hey, get to work. You know, this is a tool here, like, uh -huh. uh, you know, the last week that uh, uh, Sister Sheila was on the program. She talked about this being our tool yes. Yes. and stuff. And it is. And we, he gives us, he prepares us. He, um, so to speak, uh, what, I, what I think of is um, I think we need to have refresher courses for new and um, uh, older ministries, yeah, to un un reboot camp type yes, of thing. Yes, yes, Because don't you think sometimes you know through the years, although you're, you're serving Christ and although you're doing what He called you to do, sometimes we need to go back to get that boost of energy, to get that uh, excitement. Because over the years, sometimes it kind of dulls, and uh, we're so caught up in doing this and so yes. caught up in doing that. But I do, you know, I've asked God, you know, to put me back in boot camp. Yes. I mean, it could be hard. I don't know, you know. I mean, in the natural, you know, when they go to boot camp, they work on them, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. Uh, in, the arm, in the natural army. But to, I, I really do. Maybe that's something we need to pray about, you mm -hmm. know. And all of us come together yes. and, and have um, like a, a weekend or even just a day yes. uh, boot camp. Yes, yes. And uh, just cry out to God and, and go over some things and teach some Things reiterate some things that yes. even though let it come alive, it might be laying, laying dormant for yes. right now. Yes. Right. And once you begin hearing that word, that fire come forth, it, you can start. I, I don't know about y'all, but I just feel it when the, yes. when the anointing and, and the Holy Ghost starts right. I can just feel it starts with my feet and starts coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, my, uh, uh, I've been uh, laughed at sometimes because uh, this lady said she could tell when the Holy Ghost is coming. If, if I'm, especially if I'm sitting down and I'm listening to somebody preach, my leg will begin to shake, you know, and I'll be, the next thing I'll be going like this, you know. But um, um, it's just the excitement. The Word of God excites yes. me. Yes, yes. And I want women of God, well, not just women, but everyone, I want them to learn to break up ground. So how do you, uh, April, think uh, people should begin to break up that fellow ground? Well, I, be, I believe it begins just with what you're talking about here. Whenever, as you're even talking, I feel that spirit of revival. Because mm -hmm. for so long, we can go into these seasons where we've laid dormant. And, and the Lord, there is good ground there mm -hmm. that the Lord wants to use. And we need to break off that idleness and, mm -hmm. and begin to uh, research and repent and, and see, okay, yes. how do I need to move forward in this? And I believe that how we're going to do that is just through those boot camps mm -hmm. uh, and, and to let that spirit of revival just begin to come and stir us up and then all of a sudden it activates us yes. and when we become activated then we move forward with the Lord of okay let's go forward let's ply all let's teal let's get this ready because I mm -hmm. want to produce a harvest Amen. because the word of God it always brings forth fruit right that word brings forth when it's planted in the in the right soil it brings forth fruit and it's always going to produce it never goes forth and doesn't do anything mm -hmm. when the word of God goes forth it, it brings forth something, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I really feel like just like what we was talking to um, begin to just reach out and begin to 
not just lay there dormant anymore because I believe that this is a time to arise. I believe this is a season that we're going to come forth and where there's been idleness and where there's been nothing really happening, the Lord's calling you to come forth and Amen. bear fruit. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, you can't have a harvest unless you plant something. No. Right. Amen. No. And uh, in the natural, you can't plant corn and expect tomatoes. I believe God, when he gives us something to plant, we know specifically what he wants to plant. Yes. And uh, it's watered. Uh, you know, the word of God talks about some may plant, some may water, mm -hmm. some may reap the harvest. And everything. But the great thing about that is, to me, uh, even though you may have planted something, uh, or I might have planted it, I might have watered it, you come along and, and, and uh, we all reap the harvest. Yes, right. yes. I mean, because we all profit from that harvest because uh, it's building the kingdom of God. That's it. That's Amen. It. Praise God. And it, it, oh, I'm so excited. I can't contain myself right now. <laughs> you know, Deborah, I'd like to say something on that because it's like, I think we're coming into a place in the body mm -hmm. of Christ. And we talked a little bit about this uh, earlier about your uh, mother-in-law, mm -hmm. but I think that we're coming into a place to where God wants unity. Mm -hmm. And definitely. that unity is going to produce that harvest because that unity will produce the glory. And when that glory Amen. comes, it's going to produce, oh. it's going to produce the signs, the wonders mm -hmm. and the miracles. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, the harvest mm -hmm. will come in. Amen. But, but I think God's wanting to get us unified to where you sow, mm -hmm. I water, mm -hmm. and she comes along, and she may be the one that makes it grow. She may be the one that that nurtures it and takes care of it. But but it's a team effort. It's a team effort. Yes. It's a team effort. And what is that? It don't matter if right. you're a Church of Christ. That's right. It don't matter if I'm a General Baptist. It uh -huh. don't matter if she is Pentecostal. Uh -huh. It's not going to matter because if that person gets saved in the Church of Christ, because the one common thing that we all have in common is Jesus Christ. Amen. And Amen. His blood. Amen. Now, now we can't go through no other way. That's right. Now we can't go. We've, it's got to be under the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, and our salvation lies in that. But as long as we have that common belief, all the other little what I call ism and schisms, mm -hmm. that really is not going to make any difference because when the glory comes, mm -hmm. it's not going to matter. I really don't think. I think when the glory of God really falls like what it's going to, and I do believe mm -hmm. it's coming, mm -hmm. and when that happens, I believe that it's going to take off, and people's not going to matter. It's not no. going to matter to people what denomination That's you right. are or what, because then people's mind's going to be on one thing and one thing only, and that's just living in that glory. Yes, yes, yes. And I believe that's where we're coming is unity in the body. And you you can, well, some um, some mornings I wake up and I, it's just like I can feel something in the, in the, in the even in the air, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, anticipation. Yes. And I'll, you know, I'll ask, Lord, is this, I can't, you know, is this, <laughs> is this the day it starts, you know? And I'll get excited, but no matter what, you know, I'm, you know, uh, of course I want uh, I want the glory of God to come down. Uh, I, you know, but I, we can't manipulate things ourselves. No. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going through something right now where I'm receiving uh, messages from someone that uh, that is trying to manipulate the situation to to happen, and and they're asking me to pray. And all I can do is give them the word. Yeah. And yeah. that's all I can. You know. You've got to go by what God says. That's right. You know, not what man says. No. And uh, the the anticipation should excite us whether we're in a dry spell. Yes. Or you know, you know, we're just going to, we're on spiritual high. And I I've been i I've been seeing it rise and things, you know, groups rising up here, rising up there, you know, and, and it's good. That's one good thing Facebook's good for. You can keep track of the, these yes. different ministries, mm -hmm. what's going on. And I love that. And it's good that we pray for one another. Yes. That's where the teamwork, mm -hmm. teamwork comes in. And to teach people how to break up that fallow ground. Yes. And you can't just talk about doing it. you got to do it. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's like a, it's not do as I say, not as I do type thing. You've got to do it. You've got to walk it, talk yes. it, breathe it, live it. Uh, what the word says to do, and you keep doing it, no matter what you're seeing, no matter what circumstance you're going through, uh, just believe and trust in God. And one day you're, 
I believe that you know, we're going to wake up or we just be maybe in the middle of the day doing something all of a sudden, bam. Mm -hmm. Bam, when we least <laughs> yes. expect it. Yes. And it, it, you know, it's going to be hard to contain us. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. Oh, have you, have you, uh, have you ex experienced uh, uh, or seen anyone experience about uh, they refuse to break up their fellow ground? Mm -hmm. It's it's sad, but I have, Deborah. I've I've seen I've seen, to be honest, I've seen church people mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I've seen girls that come into our home that some of them is like that. Mm -hmm. You know, now a lot of girls that come into the home is not so much like that because really their ground has been broke before they get there, mm -hmm. and it's so easy to plant seeds in those. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we have had girls come in, and maybe they just came in because they wanted to get out of jail. Mm -hmm. Okay their ground's not been broke. Mm -hmm. And when you start trying, and this just happened to me not a few weeks ago, I went out there and I was going to teach on the Holy Ghost. And it was just like, I was teaching and it was coming back. I was teaching. Just bouncing off. It was bouncing. It was hard ground. Mm -hmm. It was just like, and in the natural, if you take seed and you take seed out on the ground and that ground's not been plowed, mm -hmm and you try to put that seed, it's just going to bounce off. Mm -hmm. And so they don't receive that seed. And the girl wound up leaving. Mm. And, you know, she wasn't there two weeks, April. Wow. She was about there two weeks. And so, but we experienced the same thing in church. Yes. You know, yes. We, we experienced the same. That's what's sad mm -hmm. is because there's people that has been born again, that has been mm -hmm. filled with the Spirit of God. You know, and you would think that those people would, would be, their ground would be broke. Yes. But it's not because of what you said, life issues come in mm -hmm. and things happen. Sometimes we get hard. You know, we we get hard over things happening to mm -hmm. us and we put that up. Mm -hmm. And then when the preacher gets up or a minister gets up and tries to plant a seed in you, mm -hmm. that you can't receive it. You can't right. receive it because that ground's hard and it's not being cultivated. Well, um, I've, I've seen it in church services as well where... Uh, the man or woman of God will be bringing the word, and you could literally see people's back just stiffen. Mm -hmm. And uh, but what an opportunity they have missed! Yes, to yes. receive what God was trying to do something in them at that precise time. Mm -hmm. And it would be people uh, this uh, man or woman of God might not even know, you know. And sometimes they get offended, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and uh, they think, uh, well, blah blah blah, you know, but. Uh, they didn't even know the man, uh, the the people in the congregation. Mm -hmm. So you know it had to be God. Yes. And uh, I, you know, I'm very careful what prophetic word I listen to. Mm -hmm. It's going to link with my spirit. It's, yes. And it's going to be backed up by the word yes. of God. But because uh, I realize there's going to be false teachers and false prophets sure. out there. But uh, when God tries to get you started by the man or woman of God ministering and uh, then not receiving it. God is trying to give you those spiritual tools, mm -hmm. that spiritual yeah. shovel or plow, so to speak, to start plowing yes. up that, uh, that unusable ground so it can be pliable, yes. so that yes. you know, the seed can be planted. And we, uh, we often see those types of things in people, uh, you know, as ministers, uh, having ministries or pastoring, uh, we see these things. Yes. We mm -hmm. see these things come in because the enemy, uh, I believe that the enemy especially those that has a really, really hard time. Mm -hmm. So um, the enemy uses every tool he can to stop them from receiving that. Yes. It's just like, you know, uh, he tries to intercept that yes. blessing, yes. that seed that's to go to going forth. And unless we, as uh, other brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to learn to pray for one another and uh, that uh, their hearts will be pliable, mm -hmm. that that, you know, that fallow ground will be broken up. I, I try to get to the church uh, early every Sunday morning before anyone else gets there, and I pray, you know, for the Lord to open the eyes and the hearts and and let their hearts be pliable. You know, let them receive the word that's going to be spoken mm -hmm. today because it's our duty to do that. Yes, it is. And uh, but we don't realize that sometimes, and and sometimes people just come in, you know, just for a rush message, you know, not to really read or see. Receive. You know, I, I heard years ago about all these drive through messages. You can go through a drive through You know, I, I'm not that type of person, but, you know, I, there's there's moments when I do have to do like a five-minute devotional. Yeah. But, you know, at some point in the day, I open up my Word 
and have a detailed reading and study. And that's where the breaking up mm -hmm. begins. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. And, uh, and we get on our knees. Lord, uh, if the ground needs to be replowed, you know, every if, every spring, what do you got to do? Yes. You got you to mm -hmm. till up that ground yes. and stuff. And how much more so should we do this phys uh, physically? That's right. And I think it should be done daily myself. Yes, yes. <laughs> Not just wait till springtime natural comes. But uh, we need to learn to do that daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why does the Word of God, you think, say renew your minds daily? daily. Yep. It's because we've got all this junk going around us. Yes. You know? And, you know, I get excited when, uh, when I see little things, you know, happening and, and ministries raise, uh, rising up. And, you know, I get excited when I see other ministries prospering. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we should. Yes, we should. Yes, we should. I, I'm a firm believer in planting seeds and, and, and other ministries. And asking God to believe him because, like you're saying, if we're in unity, we're a big team. Mm -hmm. Yes, we it's are. One big team. And I, sometimes I picture the Lord just up there going, when are they going to get it? Yeah. yeah. When are they going to get it? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I read some of the stories. And Do you know that scripture? I'm not sure. I know it's in the Old Testament, I believe, where it says, when you pass through the waters, they shall not overcome them. Mm -hmm. When you pass through the fire... And, and that's the answer to every last problem. It's not, you're not going to be overcome with it. So uh, that's why through. you're going through yes. to the other side. So yes. that lets me know uh, that if I'm going through something, that uh, I can make it through. That's right. Can. By the grace of God. His word says I can. That's right. Amen. Yes. And that should be exciting to others. Praise God. Praise yes. God. So uh, in breaking up Graham, uh, when you... Uh, See others begin to realize they've got to till up that ground. And uh, at, at the Hope Center, what do you teach them to do uh, as far as uh, plant, uh, beginning, beginning to plant the seed and stuff? Well, uh, of course, the seed is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So when, when we see that they are open mm -hmm. and they're ready to, to receive, then what we begin to do is we just begin to teach. Mm -hmm. And April does a lot of that. She does a lot of, she has a, a teaching gift on her. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord begins to use her to plant those seeds. Mm -hmm. And, but along with that, we teach them to plant their own seeds. Yes. Yeah. And so they have time that they spend with the Lord every mm -hmm. day. And when they're spending that time, they're getting seeds. Amen. They're getting seeds. And a lot of times they'll come down from, from there and they're like, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, let me show you what the Lord showed me. Let me show you what God gave me. And what that is, is they've opened their self up. Yes. And God's just pouring the seeds in. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And you can't wait to see it grow and stuff. You know, uh, I've often given this analogy where uh, when you plant something, it's first got to die. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to die to self. Yes. Uh, before it can start sprouting and, and coming. Through. But it pushes through all that dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, heaviness. And we as children of God, we've got to learn to die to self. We've got to learn to press on and press through to push aside all yes. that dirt so that we can spring forth. Yeah. Uh, there's another scripture that talks about, you know, springing forth suddenly. Uh, your health will spring forth uh -huh. suddenly. And, you know, that's a promise. Yes, it is. You know, when we're sick in body, we, every answer to life is in this word. Yes. Every seed, if we would just learn to take the authority and plant that seed. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. and, and, and water it. Continue to water it, you know, through your prayer and speaking it forth. Um, just keeping it before your eyes constantly. Amen. 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 Uh, would you like to share uh, anything else? April, you got something yes. to share? Uh, well, you know, as I was reading also in Hosea 10 and 12, it also talks about breaking up fallow ground. And it said, break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes mm. and rains righteousness on you. Wow. And, you know, we may be in that season of, you know, where there's nothing happening and we've been dry and barren and no fruit coming forth. But the Lord said, you seek me and you'll find me. Amen. Mm -hmm. You seek me and you begin to work and plow. And, and that's that's work when you're yeah. plowing that ground. I mean, that's that's labor that comes mm -hmm. in there and we're sweating and it's hot and, you know, it doesn't, it's not very comfortable. But, man, we're getting prepared for a harvest to be able to be birthed for yes, through yes. us. So seek me and you'll find me. Yes. Uh, we've got to work for it. Yes. It's yes, just not yes. something, you know, bam, it's going to happen. Uh, you, know, you see so many people, they want they want the blessing, but they don't want that's right. the work that comes yeah. along with it. Uh, but uh, my mother always taught me, you know, um, working for something is always a great for great reward. 
And when you said that, uh, April, I, I thought about the song, The More I Seek You, mm -hmm. The More I, I Find, find you. you. So if, you, you know, if you're not finding God, if you're not hearing from God, guess where it's laying at? That's right. <laughs> right. I don't mean to sound, you know, harsh, but, but, but it, right. it's true. Yes, it is. Right. It's us. If you're not hearing from God, if you're not finding Him, it's not on God's side. It's on our side. Right. If you're feeling you're going through a dry spell, it's not on God's side. It's on our side. And too many times we get the two confused. Well, maybe God's given up on me. You know, I've heard people say, you know, God's given up on me. I've done too much. I just, not, you know, no way he can forgive me. Well, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you today that there's nothing that you have done yes. that God will not forgive you. He loves you too much. Yes. He's your creator. He loves you with all his heart. And he wants nothing more to welcome you with open arms. And I, when I said that, it, it came to my mind about the prodigal son. Yes. And, you know, I think I said this on one of the other programs about uh, every time I read that story that uh, I can just picture the father just going up to the door once in a while, open the door and looking down the road, expecting, yeah. expecting the son to come back. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, that's what I'm going to, you know, I know he, when we walk away from him, he expects us to come back. Uh -huh. He wants us to come back, but he did give us free choice. Yes, he did. He gave us a choice to do what we want to do. And he wants us to have a made up mind, made up heart mm -hmm. and, and know that it's real. And, and I, I think of the prodigal son where, you know, when he was started eating, you know, the pig food and everything, and he remembered, you know, even the servants eat better than this. Yeah. And sometimes we have to get to that point. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen people where they had to get to a point to the bottom of the barrel in order to look up. But uh, as far as plowing ground in the natural, sometimes, you know, there's they talk about every seven years to leave it to to lay, but sometimes spiritually we have to rest, just rest in yes. him. Yes, yes. And allow him to fill in, fill us in. Amen. Well, ladies, it's been so good having today and, and talking about uh, the fallow ground. Uh, I'm going to have you back next week, and we're going to be talking about planting the seed. Excited about that, but I know God is good. Today, if you've enjoyed this, please call us or email us and, and contact these ladies and let them know that you enjoyed what they had to say today. Until next time, I want you to walk in victory. I want you to walk in love. And I want you to keep your faith. Hold on to your faith today and believe and trust in Him. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Encounters is sponsored by Vessels of Honor Worldwide, AAA Enterprises, and the viewers. contact Encounters, email encounterswithgod at comcast.net or write to us at 117 Sunset Place, Portland, Tennessee 37148.